Hey guys, Tough Thumbs here. So this is gonna be like part one of like a series of these I do. Uh, basically whenever I get a high-end knife, like something you guys will never, you know, may never be able to get the chance to check out. Uh, and stuff that you know, you'll never see apart, like something like this bodega here. I'm um, probably just gonna, you know, when I'm, before I pimp them, or fix them, or whatever the instructions are, do with it. Um, basically gonna film it, just to check it out. Something unique like this uh, bodega. So, uh, first up, I'm gonna show you what, you know, this may be a little long, but uh, for those of you that are interested, I'm also gonna give you tips on what to use, you know, that I use just to make sure, uh, you know, I practice caution with everything I do here or something like this. So uh, first up, you know, you get a soft surface, whether it's rubber, leather, uh, paper towel, um, probably something, uh, some people were asking what, what's up with this. Uh, this is actually like a custom made uh, uh, pad pretty much. Let me see here. It's made by a knife maker, I believe. There's a little logo on the back there. But uh, it's a nice piece of leather, it's basically for, you know, Put on your nightstand or whatever, put your watch and gear here, but then there's it's raised up around the edges uh, just so whatever's on it doesn't roll off, whether it be like, you know, change or whatever, I don't know. So, you got the knife, uh, you got something, you know, not, you know, I usually use these tin things uh, for parts, but for this one, I'm gonna use this because it's, uh, you know, not as aggressive, I guess, I don't want to scratch any screws. I got another, another one for, uh, separate parts. Um, I got this padded case here. Basically I'm going to put the blade on when it's out uh, just to avoid any scratches. You know, basically this is showing you guys like I use a lot of caution when I take take your knives apart and make sure everything's you know, not getting scratched or anything like that. So then I got my two sets of torque torque drivers or whatever you call them. Screwdrivers. Got this set which is a little bit older and I got this set, which I got from Sears Hardware, nine dollars, which are newer. So you know, in case you know anything's like half stripped or something, you know. So first up, going to find out what. Yeah, I'm going to take out the pocket clip first. So got two small bits. So basically, straight up and down. Now, this is kind of like 101 here guys, but you know just for something like this straight up and down no angle to make sure it's in there Give it a little bit of pressure straight down just slowly turn it. Yeah, this is just for something like this You know, you just want to make sure that nothing gets messed up at all I'm really interested to see this thing how it works I'm wondering if this ball is actually so you can just any like slight movement can send one of these things flying onto the ground so I recommend definitely staying close as you can to the uh, surface you're working on so I take these guys out and uh, you see that ball this ball works great guys really great I, it kind of it spins around it has movement to it but it slides in and out of your pocket like better than any pod clip ever. Probably gonna use something like this on one of my knives in the future. So pod clip I'm gonna keep separate from everything else, just because you don't wanna get the screws mixed up. So you see there's uh, two standoffs there. I wonder if they just pop out. Yeah, just leave those in, they pressed in. Expecting a lot of stuff to be pressed in here. So generally you wanna keep the knife open when you're taking it apart, like say you're doing a Manix 2, um, if you have it closed, it can fly out and then you lose the ball in spring and it's just a nightmare. So, pivot screw. That's not the right size. Put it up there in the corner. Starting the body screws. I love when screws are all the same size on a knife. It's kind of nice. See, I'm kind of see, I'm loose, lost one there. Putting stuff separately so they don't get mixed up. There's a lot of hardware in this thing.
This is like a sexy strip tease. It can be boring, but you know what? I think it's pretty cool. Uh, you're not going to see this often. So, I'm guessing this is going to be pretty difficult to take it apart. So, I'm going to take everything out I can. Uh, luckily, these are not tight. You know, there's no Loctite on them, which is okay. There's enough screws here to, you know, avoid. And you want to make sure when you take these screws out that one screw on, you know, this side maybe might be longer than the other side. You want to make sure not to get those mixed up or take note. I'm wondering what these inlays. Oh, there we go. Now it's starting to spin. I'm wondering if these inlays are removable or they're epoxied on. I don't see any screws or any sort. All right, so right now we got everything apart, yet it's still together, which is a pain in the ass, but we'll see here. Got my trusty little pry, which I use very cautiously. <clears throat> Something like this, just basically take some tape. In this case, I got this blue tape here. Just put it over contact areas there. This thing's great, guys. You see them up at the counter, like at a hardware store. They're awesome. So basically, just go around the body here and just, just lightly. There we go. That's what I wanted to see right there. Look at that separate piece for the block, the lock bar, which is pretty cool. Oh shit. Well, that wasn't expected. So the ball bearings are not encased in anything. Um, they're just sitting there. So that means I'm not going to be taking the rest of the blade off here uh, because I already got a couple that have come off onto the blade, so I'll just put those back very carefully into the track here. Huh. That's that's not what I was expecting. I thought I mean I'm you know, I know a lot about knives, but I'm not like an expert. But I had thought that uh, they were encased in something. Uh, like this. You know, like in like in a track, like separate piece, but these are actually I don't like that. I don't like that at all. That actually, uh, I have, my reasoning might be weird, but I, that bugs me because if the pivot was, say, to get too loose, and you got balls falling all over the place, if I even, yeah, I don't even want to move that. Well, there's nothing to see on the other side anyway. It's just flat. Pivot goes in there, but you can see it's got the uh, kind of like the. Uh, Surefire style, Surefire or uh, Jake Hoback. It's got the inset, or the inner stop uh, stop pin, basically in the titanium. And then uh, the cool thing about this knife is this part. Uh, I basically designed it so if the lock bar ever wears, he replaced this. I'm not sure if he does for free, but yeah. You see the detent. The detent on this thing is perfect. It sticks out a little bit, slightly flattened. Obviously, it was uh, tweaked by hand. Uh, and you got a carbonized lock bar. And uh, this piece basically slides underneath of uh, this piece here. Very careful. So yeah, an over travel as well with that inlay there. And then the inlay looks like it doesn't come out. You can see it there. It's flush with the body. And then obviously the other side is solid. No screws under here, so that's obviously epoxied on. Okay, so uh you know, I'm a little worried about putting this guy back together. Luckily those were stuck in the exact position. There's three balls on the blade and, and the rest of them were in it. 
So luckily that stayed in exactly where it was supposed to stay. Thank God. That would have been a pain in the ass. So yeah, I'm gonna do to the that and put that there. So yeah, first video guys didn't, didn't turn out the way I wanted to, but I, you know, have to basically practice caution with something like this and I'm not about to fucking take that apart uh, or take the blade off when you have something like like that IKBS there. Um, I haven't had, I haven't dealt with a lot of IKBS knives, uh, I've dealt with a lot of the plastic uh, fairing system and uh, you know, they're all encased, you know, the browse blade has a nice nice stainless steel encased, kind of like that bushing or the washer I just showed you, uh, which, yeah, in my opinion, the IKBS there, that's kind of, kind of bugs me. I mean, I guess it's good if it doesn't fall apart, but I can imagine if you drop the thing, maybe one of the balls could come loose or something, and that's just, I don't know, it's just kind of weird to me. I mean, tightening screws, guys, don't, you know, don't use all your force. Um, if you do, make sure you do it very, very slowly. And just, like, just really just feel it in your hand, like, on the screwdriver, like, what's going on there. Because the second that slips, suddenly you're stripping screws. Huh. That screw doesn't want to go in there. And uh, interesting thing, guys. So I was talking to some people about, like, you know, they take apart their knife, put it back together, it never seems the same afterwards. Um, they're like, you know, it feels like something's different about it, or it just doesn't feel as solid as it did before. And that's actually something interesting because um, I've experienced that as well. Uh, basically, what it is is you have a knife. It's a real rock solid knife and you take it apart and you see all the small pieces and basically your brain kind of fucks with you and you're like you know suddenly that knife the, the illusion of toughness kind of goes away when you see all the little tiny baby parts in there alright things good yeah I'm glad those balls didn't move out of place because that would have been a uh, pain in the ass so but yeah, basically you put the knife back together and uh, it just doesn't feel the same. Well, it's all just kind of a mental thing. Uh, just kind of, you know, you see the pieces, like I said, and, you know, it's just, you know, it just feels like, since you know the way it's made, and sometimes these little screws just don't seem like anything. They seem just, like, so dinky that uh, literally your, your brain will basically, like, you remember that and it just no longer as tough as it, as it should be or what, what your brain thinks it should be, I guess. <laughs> I don't know if that makes any sense, but, you know, certain knives that take apart, I'm just like, wow, there's so many delicate parts in here, it's just, a, like, a wonder that it actually stays together. Like, you know, most knives I like to have minimal parts. I mean, for me, Sabenza is the is the epitome of perfection when it comes to construction and, and toughness and uh, durability. I mean, there's just a couple screws, and they're all reinforced with, like, a, a, a collar around them, so. So that's, and you want to make sure it's centered, everything's centered, smooth action, no blade play, no blade play at all, everything's back together the way it should be. So then I proceed to put it back in the case, and uh, yeah, that's it for that guy. But uh, yeah, and also guys, I use these shop towels, the blue ones. They're basically like the best damn paper towels. I go through almost the whole roll a day, I think. Uh, I just, you know, just practice a lot of caution with everybody's knives and I do a lot of wiping front to back. Just kidding. 
So yeah, this guy is uh, um, well made. A lot of screws, a lot of unnecessary screws here, but yeah, I guess there's two here to hold this one on and three here to hold this one on, so that's good. And I'm just doing a little quick tightening with my fingers here. See, that's about as much pressure as I put on it. So, it's good. Uh, thanks Forum Doc again for letting me uh, have permission to take this guy apart. And, uh, you know, I'll probably be doing these, like, throughout the day sometimes, like, uh, I feel like making a video, but sometimes I just don't know what to do with it. So now, I'm probably going to do that, this, and, uh, yeah, show you guys. But, you know, if there's a knife that, that you know I have, you know, you want to see taken down that you haven't seen taken down before, just let me know and I'll, I'll do it. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I can't think of... I wish I could take apart a Microtech, guys, but, you know, freaking impossible to take apart, so. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, it's a little different, but, you know, with what I do, it, it just, uh, it's part of my everyday, and I come across things that are very interesting sometimes, things that bother me, and I just kind of want to point them out, and, you know, give you guys a word of caution on some knives when you take them apart, because they're just terrible inside, or, you know, and basically give you an idea of how I rate knives, basically on construction more than anything. I mean, use is one thing, but for me, like construction, I can see how it works and I can see where it's going to fail. You know, the weak points on everything, you know? So, yeah, I just think it's interesting. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace.